Hi guys, this is the one with Bear. Welcome to another week of Clip Studio Paint tutorial. Today is super exciting for for me anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but for, for me. Because we're talking about one of my favorite features in Clip Studio Paint, the vector layer. This is such an amazing function that I'll be spending two weeks talking about it. Have you been spending time cleaning up your line art by zooming in and erasing bits, then refilling the erased bits, then erase again, then refill? Have you drawn the same curve 547 times just to control Z again? Or do you simply hear vector and immediately think of those dots and path and just can deal? If any of those scenarios apply to you, then this tutorial is for you. We will be doing introduction and the basics to vector layers this week and in-depth adjustments of vectors next week. Vector layer in Clip Studio Paint is designed and catered to line art, and it is one of the many reasons why Clip Studio Paint is the best software for comic book artists. Okay, usually when I say stuff like that, I feel like nobody will take me seriously because I'm wearing a Clip Studio Paint shirt. Like, of course I'm going to say it's the best, but then I really do mean it. And then, so I guess I like switch to a raccoon onesie, but then I don't think you're going to take me seriously now either, so. I had a very tight deadline to complete this wall graphic for Wacom, and I would have no way of meeting the deadline if it wasn't for this feature. I swear on my slimes. So what is so... Oh, hold on. Sorry. Okay. So what is so amazing about it? And what is Vector? If you have experience with Vector in Photoshop and Illustrator, you use the pen tool to drag and drop anchor points to create paths. In Clip Studio Paint, Vector actually works very differently. Vector in Clip Studio Paint is actually a layer type. If you go to your layer panel, you will see that there's the usual new raster layer, which we use for painting and drawing. And then there is something called new vector layer. Click on that and it will give you a new layer that has a little cube icon on the side. The cube icon indicates a vector layer, and now everything you draw on this layer is going to be a vector path. The difference between vector and raster is that vector is made of calculated path, whereas raster is made of pixel. Vector layer is capable of maintaining image quality when you scale it up and down, because the image quality you see is directly calculated by the path and control points that you created. Raster layer are pixel based, therefore it allows easy transition between colors. And here you can see the comparison after the both layers being blown up by 500%. The vector is capable of maintaining a sharp look, whereas the Raster layer has a bit of trouble maintaining the sharp edges. That being said, you can blend very easily on raster layer, but you cannot blend on vector layer because they're all individual path and therefore they do not mix together. In short, you'll want to paint in raster layer and do your line art on vector layer. But if you're not dealing with size changes, then what's the point of using vector? That's where things get really exciting. When you're on a vector layer and you go into eraser tool, you will notice that the vector eraser has been enabled. On a raster layer, this part is grayed out. Vector layer generates each stroke as a path, and therefore it is able to remember how the path was drawn and also how they intersect. And when you're in the vector eraser, you can change the mode to erase up to intersection and just go over the parts that you don't want. And now remember where it intersect and easily clean up the part. Miss a spot. Or you can change the mode to whole line and let it erase the entire path. And if you need to use a regular eraser or to break a path, all you have to do is switch it back to erase touched areas and then back to whole line to clean it up. And here's an example of how I use it in my work. I don't worry about overshooting my lines because I know I can clean it up super easily. Now that function in itself saves me a tremendous amount of time. I was constantly zooming in and erasing and zooming in and erasing and zooming in and er you get the point. But that's not it. Here comes the best next thing, the line adjustment. Before we get into the function itself, I would like to show you something interesting. You will notice that in the middle of this time lapse, the size of the interface changed. 
That is because the first part of this drawing was done on Wacom Cintiq Pro 24. The second half of this drawing was done on Wacom 1. To make it a little bit easier to identify, I did the drawing on Cintiq Pro 24 in green, which has 8,000 pen pressure. And I did the drawing on Wacom 1 in black, which has 4,000 pen pressure. I also tried staying in the same zoom and never changed the brush size, so you can compare how different 4,000 and 8,000 would look. And due to Clip Studio Paint having the option to customize your brush to have individual pressure curve, you can get super skinny line and super thick line even at 4000 pressure level. And while the Wacom one hardly pales in comparison, the Cintiq does have more intricate control over the line width, having double amount of the pin pressure. But that's where the line adjustment comes in. Look for the very last icon correct line in your toolbar. These sub tools are designed specifically to use for the vector lines. Once you click on the correct line width, you will see several options available to you in the tool property channel. And from here, you can choose to make the lines thicker by just going over it, or make it narrower, or choose process whole line and maintaining the ratio of each width and scale it down, scale it up. Ooh, that's too big. <laughs> <laughs> Scale it down again. There you go. You can always choose to have it just process the parts that you go over or process the entire vector line. If you don't care for the line width and would like to remove them all, you can always choose fix width, choose the width that you are looking for, process the whole line, and just use a big brush and go over the whole thing. because this is vector, you're not losing any line quality. But the amazing thing is that this is only the tip of an iceberg. But I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger because that's a whole video worth of content. It's definitely not because I have to play Animal Crossing. But thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. Stay healthy and safe. Until next week.